That's yeah. why everybody yeah. hates Josh Kostya. Yeah. <laughs> like literally. Fuck that guy, dude. Yeah. Watching him fight pissed me off. Mm-hmm. I swear, I, dude, when Tyron Woodley knocked him out, I think I fucking nutted. <laughs> I was like, there's a hug. Oh. Because he got hit. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he bro. wobbled and he went, boom. 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 Yeah. I was so happy. I was like, there's a God. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. In five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Como estas? Uh, muy bien. <laughs> well, you just asked how you doing, and you said very hey. good to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you just it's like that guy that sneezes and he goes, "Bless you." Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. is muy guapo. Who's very handsome? Uh, para con Dios. <laughs> hey, y'all know more Spanish than I do. Bro. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying, bro. So. Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. We have Edric and we have Alex Acosta here. Bowler extraordinaire. Hey, <laughs> this motherfucker, dude. The lanes, baby. I, was, I was just talking about this. You want to meet somebody who gets into the most random hobbies out of nowhere. He'll be like powerlifting one day. And the next day he's like, hey, bud, you know, I just started crocheting. <laughs> I'm like, are you trying to get some an oven mitt real quick, bro? Hey, my mom did teach me how to do that once at bro, one point. Right I right was never, that was never like a hobby I was trying to get into. I just, right? you just over here just fucking watching a movie just knitting some shit all you was clack clack I have tea clack. out of nowhere all of a sudden I'm drinking tea and shit like no but it was between bowling or uh, I don't know bowling and arrowing or what's it called oh, archery archery <laughs> <laughs> It was between bowling or archery yeah, for the right? hobbies. Why? Why specifically those two? Well, I just say bowling. I mean, I'm talking about Robin. You know how we do it. That bow and arrow, son. You know that. Hey, you know that. <laughs> but so the reason why bowling number one is it's fun as hell, right? You can go with a lot of people. Yeah. And archery is expensive. So like one of my homies started doing it, mm. and like he was like, "Oh yeah, get get one, all shit." And I looked at the price. I'm like, "God." I think I'm a bull, bro. <laughs> this shit expensive as fuck. What the hell? <laughs> it wasn't even because you were hella interested. It's more like, oh, this shit cheaper. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> no, bowling's fun, but I was just telling David, like, I got battle wounds already and shit. Like, my knuckles. Don't call it battle wounds, man. Bro, we in the field out there, so, like, it gets dangerous out there in the street. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I just, This yeah. one is such a very unique personality because I'm, I've known Alex now for years. When he gets into something, the motherfucker get into it, bro. It's not like, oh, I'll just go pick up a random kind of <laughs> custom bowling ball. I saw the inserts and shit. Oh, I'm like, I knew yeah, this bro. motherfucker oh, would. Right dude. from the gate, you already got your custom ball so made I've and been, everything. You know, I bowled my whole life, okay, but not okay. like not like where we're going yeah, all the time, right? Yeah. But I've always used house balls. And house balls are whack as fuck. Yeah, I get. Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. shit until like I started bowling, um, and my homie was like, "You should get a custom ball." Because yeah. I was like, "Fuck it, let's do a league, right?" Yeah. Like the thing is, I miss competing from powerlifting, right? Mm. So I'm like, I want to do something where I can compete in, and it'd just be fun, you know. So then bowling. So I get the custom ball, and I'm like, damn. So like, yeah, I've already learned like so much shit about bowling. Yeah, because like, like oh, the that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You want to aim at your arrows. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, yeah. I don't know none of this. How shit. many steps you you lead into the? Uh, I take. I think right now I'm at four. Four. Okay. Uh, but so I've more been traditional. Watching, yeah, I've been yeah. watching like some of the people are like at five. Some yeah. two handers are yeah. like at two. Some, but some some people got like that. The mini step oh, lead yeah. into they they yeah. like take like, eight ten steps into it. See, I like you always coming on bowling and shit. We know, right? Catch me on the lanes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't say that. So just trying to make them slang and legal. Hey, catch me on the lanes. Yeah. Like, hey, you for the to catch me on the lanes? I'm like, nobody says that, Alex. Nah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> well, I can't believe you got in the bowling. But anyways, the topic that we're going to talk about <laughs> is some shit that has been on my mind. Like, we haven't done a UFC fight podcast in a long time, which a lot of people have been recommending, even people who don't watch fighting. Mm. And I only, I think the reason why is because of how, how much we love this shit, yeah. right? And if you guys don't watch fighting, that's completely okay. Um, it's violent. Like, Mariel hates looking at it because it's so bloody. Yeah. But this last fight card was something very, very oh, special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still hyped about it from the last... And I always say this every time we talk about it, that this was the best card ever. This was the yeah. best card ever. Bro. Honestly, and it was because, like... Even the, it wasn't like particularly like stacked, yeah, but the yeah. fights were just so fucking good, bro. And you're just like the stories <laughs> yeah, of what man. happened. It was yeah. it was insane. It's, yeah. Well, no, no, I was just gonna say like um, this. This is coming from like me being a fan of MMA f- before what it is now. I feel like right now there's a lot more people who are kind of watching it as a sport. But you remember back in the days when 
blockbuster video days when uh, you know UFC used to be next to faces of death. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were no rules yeah. like punching people in the Dude, dick the, was all the ball punching was the most hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they would literally have somebody in in a in a had an arm choke yeah. and, and the defense was ball punching. Oh yeah, my exactly. God, yeah. No weight classes, yeah. no rules, they would, they would no fucking gloves. Dick punch. It was the craziest thing ever, yeah. which is why yeah. I fucking loved it. I didn't yeah. get to see it often because I didn't have like cable or anything else like yeah. that. Yeah, but somebody yeah. would record it on a VHS and they would show me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Todd, this is the best thing ever. Hey, yeah. my dad had a black box, baby. We was watching the fuck out that <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> black box was the shit back in the day. Channel 77. It's like, yo, I got that cable guy who, you know, yeah. you just you <laughs> slip him a little something and you get that for you. So UFC 278 was very important because there was two two fights that were coming up, right? If you guys don't know, there's a guy named Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa is fucking Jack. Mm-hmm. Like he, so, he looks so huge. He doesn't man. even look human. Yeah. Right? I yeah. met him in person before, and like even Bart or, or David, because you've been around Bart and these powerlifters, right? We've met some big people. Yeah. When I met Paulo Costa, because my homies train at Fight Ready in Arizona. I was like, yeah, this is like one of the first people I'm meeting. Like, bro, how the fuck do you make 185? Right, yeah, right. Like, he was huge. As a middleweight, right? Yeah. So in his previous fight, he missed the weight by like 25 pounds. <laughs> it was like, yeah. he, all, yeah. he broke records. Like, yeah. You've never seen a fighter come in 25 pounds heavier. It's yeah. just yeah. not happening. And so he fought a guy named Marvin Vittori. Marvin Vittori won. He was like, fuck it, I'll fight you at any weight class. Yeah. So they basically fought at light heavyweight. I feel and like Marvin Vittori got something loose up there. <laughs> he's, 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 he's unstable, bro. Oh, yeah, he's mad. And he was yeah. a perfect matchup for yeah. someone yeah. like Paulo oh, yeah. Costa. Yeah. He's he's like a brawler, but he's a lot more technical than him. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't imagine Paulo Costa winning that fight at all. Yeah. Even in his bigger bigger size, he yeah. wasn't going to take out Marvin Vittori. Mm-hmm. But, and that's generally what happened. So Mar- up to leading this fight, there was Luke Rockhold. So just to give you guys some background information, Luke Rockhold is a former Strike Force middleweight champion Legend. from Strike Force, came to UFC, won the middleweight belt again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His legacy is actually pretty crazy. Yeah. When you see the way that people talk about him now, they they kind of judge him off of his last two mm-hmm. losses, right? So he got knocked out because he went up to light heavyweight yeah. by Jan Bahovitz, who became a champion. Right. Yeah. And then who was that? Who, Yoel. Yeah, Yoel, Yoel Romero. Yoel broke knocked, his jaw, yeah. knocked him the fuck out. Yeah. These two are very unique specimens, though. Mm-hmm. Yoel Romero. He's, is he's one of those same dudes where he looks huge for his weight class. Yeah. I don't understand how he's 185. <laughs> yeah. He's gigantic. Yeah. yeah. Q, uh, the Cuban, Cuban wrestler, mis- Cuban boxer. Yeah. yeah. Cuban Missile Crisis or something is what they yeah. call him. Oh, like. no. that, there, I think there is a fighter called the Cuban Missile Crisis oh, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, th- that's the same. Like, you forget who he lost to. Mm-hmm, so I right. think that was like the whole thing right now for leading up to this fight was like, oh, this Luke Rockhold have a chin. Yeah. It's yeah. like, but look who he got knocked out by. Right. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Some like, scary fucking dudes yeah. who are legends in their own right. Mm-hmm. And like for me too, I had to look back at his record and, you know, I would talk about Luke Rockhold's chin, but I'm like, hold on a second. Look at who he got knocked out by. Yeah. yeah. Yoel Romero and also Jan Bakovic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So different. And he was in a weight class that wasn't his yeah, weight class. Yeah, exactly. So he took a he took a three year hiatus, which yeah. is a really fucking long time. And mm-hmm. his first fight is a killer, like Paul Acosta. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what he said. What he wanted though, he yeah. said mm-hmm. he felt scared, and he had to think about who makes him feel scared, and that's what got him up in the morning and motivated to like really do this. Now the the craziest thing about this fight, if you guys have it, just look up clips on YouTube. It was a bloody yeah. fucking <laughs> mess. <laughs> that fucking scene when he just and then uh, like blowing uh, up. It was, it dude. reminded me of the scene from Fight Club. Remember when uh, Brad Pitt's character he lets Lou yeah, yeah, beat yeah. the yeah. shit out yeah. of him <laughs> and he's like we really want to stay here Lou and he just <laughs> like getting blood all over his face I was yeah. really I, I wouldn't even be surprised if he took it from Fight Club yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah probably yeah. Yeah. yeah and Luke Rockhold has been notoriously known to be terrible on the mic he mm-hmm. says some really oh, yeah. corny stupid shit mm-hmm. yeah. it's just easy to make fun of oh 100% him. I, after like when he was coming back I was like yo I'm fucking excited and then the press conference happened I was <laughs> like, like yo Luke just shut <laughs> up yeah. Yeah. like I just want to see you fight yeah. man. Just like, oh, I'm, you know. I'm a motherfucking samurai yeah, <laughs> he reminds me of like Stephen A. Smith because he just uses random, <laughs> random big words out of yeah. nowhere. He's like, man, let me tell you something about this. Like over here, this this word, I'm a samurai. I'm a ninja. When I slice the air, the air doesn't even. I was like, bro, <laughs> I know. I was like, oh man, man. shut the fuck shut up, the fuck please. Up. But he's been on this weird tip because he's been doing shrooms. Yeah, so, yeah. dog. He came out like he was in a zombie movie. I'm like, yo, what's with this fool's face? What mm-hmm. happened to him? Yeah. 
He, by the way, is like, I think he was signed to Diesel. He was a, a yeah, model. Yeah, he's a male model. A male model. He's Right like, now? Uh, I think that contract's up. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But he made millions off of that. Okay, shit. that's he, good. At least he got his money. Really? Yeah. Th- like, literally, it was like the two of the best looking dudes in the UFC fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it you was, got Ricky Martin. Yeah, someone, <laughs> asked, someone asked Dana, they're like, are you going to put the uh, belt on the line? Basically, like, the hottest, <laughs> hottest <laughs> male hottest fighter. Motherfucker. Yeah, hottest motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Dog. And so watching these two fight was crazy because... The way that Luke Rockhold was talking about Paulo Costa, he was he had some hate for him. Like, yeah. He goes, I fucking hate this dude. Mm. And by the way, for somebody like me, like Paulo Costa, I, n- I never he's never going to get the belt. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the way that he fights, how hard he gets tagged. Yeah. And you're seeing now in this fight, they were fighting at elevation in Colorado, mm-hmm. which was so apparent with every yeah, fight. Everyone was gassing <laughs> out. Oh, bro. Gas. After that the was... first round, everyone was like, <gasps> yeah, bro. And I mean, we... Except Kamaru and Leon, which was surprising. Oh, yeah, yeah, which was fucking nuts. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We'll yeah. get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, th- if you ever wanted to watch a, a crazy fight, just watch this Luke Rockhold fight. In the first round, gassed. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. bro, tell me if, so I don't, when you noticed, when I noticed it, right, it was like after like a punch had landed from Costa, and then all of a sudden, Luke had like his mouth open and his mouthpiece was out. Yeah. And I was watching it with my dad. I'm like, oh, fuck, he broke his jaw. And then like 10 seconds passed. I was like, oh, no, I think he's just fucking he's gay. Just he's yeah. I looked at the time. I'm like, bro, we've all, we've all yeah. been fighting for yeah. like two minutes. Exactly. Bro. We're not what even the? out of the first yeah. round yet. And I was so, like, holy shit. The funny shit is, too, when I was watching that, I'm like, oh, Paulo Costa's doing pretty well. And then the moment the second round hit, Paulo Costa. Was gas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, wait, he was tired the first round too, and it hit him in the second. Yeah. yeah. Both of them were exhausted in the second fucking <laughs> round. Yeah. yeah. And then also, too, the crazy thing is Luke Rockhold got reversed, mm-hmm. reversed his position on the ground from yeah. Paulo Costa. So yeah. he did fucking work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. Here's the reason why I didn't want Paulo Costa to win that fight, right? Was because Paulo Costa was getting cracked mm-hmm. by a gassed out Luke Rockhold. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> One clip of him, he goes, he's circling the cage and he goes, Fuck you! Hits him with the overhand yeah, left. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little brother mad at his big brother. Yeah. Fuck you! And then yeah, he, punches, he, yeah. he, he, but he yelled landed. "Fuck you!" to him multiple times. You yeah. know, he rocked Costa like three, four times. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. almost had him knocked out. And honestly, yeah. it looked like Rockhold was gonna give up at one point. Uh, for real. When he mm-hmm. put his hands on his knees and he just like oh, bent. I, know. I was yeah. like, "Yo, what he in the middle of a fight? Yeah. Really? Hey, you want to just giggle for no fucking reason? Do a watch a replay of this fool doing the craziest uppercut to his balls." <laughs> Oh, I know, right? Fuck. And then Costa's over here trying to be like, oh, this wasn't even legal. Oh, my God. Yeah. You yeah. scooped the fuck yeah. out of this cup. Like, if you guys are watching this on video, I'm going to give you a visual of it. This full. <laughs> bruh. He hit the fuck He's out of his sure ball, you can't bruh. those balls, I've man. never seen a tiger uppercut to a nut, dog. Yeah. That is probably the hardest nut punch in <laughs> UFC history. Yeah, bro. He fucking took that shit from hell and yeah. shot it to heaven. Mm. And then... He, Still fought. Yeah. yeah. And he he only took maybe like a 30 second break. Yeah. And he goes, No, I'm ready to go. Let's go again. Yeah, no. At that point, too, I was like, Bro, take five minutes. Take, take the, the five full minutes, five, man. Bro. Take the full five. But I don't know about you guys, but like, I've never really been a Luke fan, especially because I was such a Bisbing fan. So yeah. when they fought, even both times, I just never really liked Luke. But yeah. after this fight, I'm like bummed that he retired. I know. I know. Because I'm like, bro, you actually, for being exhausted after like a minute of fighting, Dude, and you fought that whole fight, yeah. and it wasn't like you got blown out of the water, bro. Yeah. Like that yeah. was kind of a close fight. Yeah. He And then I think he answered the questions because even me, like I was always like, oh, he probably doesn't, have, he don't have no chin. He don't have no chin. Mm-hmm. He got cracked by oh, Costa. Who hits hard for sure? And so, like now, I'm like, bro, if he stuck around, he could probably beat some of these top middleweights. Yeah, like he was supposed to fight Strickland. I'm like, damn, he probably could have yeah. beat that. He probably could have won that fight. Yeah. And uh, it is a bummer, but uh, yeah, like that's when I when I was watching this fight, I was like. It is crazy how tired he got, knowing like the team that he trains with. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, like, I, I, in my head, I'm still thinking, like, I wonder if something else was up. Yeah, because like I'm like fuck, like well the three year layoff the three year a big factor, right? Yeah, because you can't emulate what it's like when in, in a game time setting. You know, yeah. you're sparring and all that. You're not gonna go as hard as you're gonna go, especially against a guy like Paulo, right? Yeah. And he's who's a huge dude who's gonna be who's and gonna mess you goes up, forward, bro. right? Who's Just, gonna pressure you? <clears throat> for me too, like Paulo Costa's stock dropped so much for me mm-hmm. because. He lo- he almost lost straight up to a 37 year old dude that had a three yeah. year layoff. That's yeah. on shrooms. Hundred <laughs> percent, Honestly, that's what I was saying. I, I was yeah. just talking about this yesterday. I was like, 
this th- didn't really look good for Costa it didn't, at all. It yeah. didn't. dropped way low. Rockhold yeah. actually got the W. <laughs> yeah, Costa got bro. The like, the L, I feel man. like people <laughs> feel like more like me. Like, oh no, fuck! Don't retire, bro. Keep fighting. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I, like I got super emotional because watching him fight through that exhaustion, mm-hmm. it it kind of motivated me. I'm like, oh, yeah. Doug, look at this guy. It's it was, inspirational for sure. Because he kept saying this where he's a samurai and a warrior. Yeah. And then, in the fight, I was like, I you are a samurai. You like, are a samurai. Yeah, you are Ken you, Watanabe, yeah. man. You are, you are literally dying on your sword. You're like, mm-hmm. you are a... Fu- I get it. Why yeah. you keep calling yourself a samurai now? Because yeah. yeah. it's true. When he said this in the in his interviews, I didn't really think about it. He goes, when have you ever seen me give exactly, up? Exactly, yeah. I'm like, oh shit, he has never tapped. He has never given up. Mm-hmm. He's gotten knocked out, but he never said, I'm quitting. Yeah. And he made a point in that fight. He could have quit way earlier. Yeah. Which, again, looked like he was going to multiple times. Mm-hmm. It, his, his body language is like, I'm done. I'm d-. And then hey. he comes with the fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, out of there nowhere. There was one point he like, even turned around. Costa hit yeah. him with like, a body shot. Yeah. And he did like, the whole like, turn yeah. around. Yeah, he grimaced. And I was like, I was like oh, fuck, bro, yeah. he's done. And but, he came back and he yeah. cracked him, almost knocked him out again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, dude, Costa, you suck. I wish he would have <laughs> retired. I'm not like the biggest Luke fan, but I would love to see him fight when like his conditioning's good and shit. Cause I'm like, bro, you did that. And then you, as you know, like when you're tired and exhausted, it's even easier to get knocked out. It's For easier sure. to crumble to a For body sure. shot. You almost want to get hit in the yeah, face. Yeah. And he was just eating that shit, bro. And yeah. I'm like, bro, like, because he's so skilled, like, especially like his ground game and shit, it is kind of a bummer. Cause like we've, I, like when I started paying attention to him was the Bisbing fight, right? Mm-hmm. So I seen him get knocked, like really paying attention. The title was, fight, when right? When he got knocked out, yeah. then Yoel, yeah. you know, then Jan. So you're just like, oh, fuck it. But when he actually fights and you see his like skill and like his heart and shit, you're like, bro, he could Props. do really good. Yeah. I yeah. really a problem for so. anybody in that division. Yeah. 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 But I think for him too, He's already proven his point in this division, and he probably has another good year left. Mm -hmm. Right. So for him, his why is gone now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just hard to get back into that cage. I mean, especially in the fashion that he did. Dude, when he rubbed that blood in his face, it was from when he was— he had his back taken by a close mm-hmm. and yeah. he tur- flipped yeah, it around yeah. in position, got into his guard <laughs> yeah. and started rubbing that blood yeah. into his face. Because he already knew he lost at that point. He yeah. just like, I'm just make, this, make it as dirty as possible If for they you, gave man. it to Rockhold, I would have been happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would, I, honestly, I wouldn't have been mad. Yeah, yeah. I think anybody would have. both did the same. It was a close fight, yeah, honestly. I, thought, I honestly was surprised that how far it was towards Costa. Yeah. I thought it was going to be maybe like a 29-28 mm-hmm. and then like a split... But the way they scored it, I, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't agree. I with will that. say that this is like I feel like one of the only times that you ever seen somebody retire on a loss. Amazing. But it's like good, yeah. They're like, oh yeah. fuck yeah, because yeah. like he just went out and showed the fuck yeah. out and didn't get finished, you know. So he answered all those questions. He answered his questions that he never quits, you yeah. know, all that type of shit. Yeah. So like this was like the best way to go out on a loss if you're gonna go it out on a loss. It really couldn't have been more epic than the way it finished, yeah. right? And at the end, him showing the motion, just being like, "Look, guys, I'm done. Yeah. You know, I did my thing. I'm done." <laughs> when yeah. this, when this like no was... one cares about Costa. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, He's everybody's not a popular dude to begin. With yeah. anyway. The thing about Costa, the reason why I don't like him as a fighter is that he has has yet to really evolve. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, his ground game got a little bit better here and there, right? But he, nothing has evolved from his striking. Yeah. He still gets cracked really fucking hard. And you're yeah. seeing, like, even in these fights, before when P- Costa would get cracked, he'd be kind of wobbly. He got wobbled hard yeah. in this one. It's mm-hmm. starting to wear him out a little bit. Hell yeah. So the he thing, needs to switch it up. The mm-hmm. thing that annoys me about him all the time is every time you know it's a good shot, he always sticks out his tongue. Like 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 yeah. like it didn't do anything, but that's when he you goes, know it was a hard shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He does yeah. this shit, it sticks yeah, out on, his tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and if he didn't do that, he wouldn't have gotten wobbled so hard. Yeah. 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 Trust me, that, because we watched the sport for so long, you've you don't get to see fighters who take hits like that and still survive. Besides Romero, yeah, Romero's just unique. He's mm-hmm. one of one fighter. Like yeah. he'll get kicked in the head full blast, and then he'll just be like, "What's the problem?" Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, you see, right? It's like, and what exactly what your point is? It's like. No matter who you are, you can always get knocked yeah, out. Exactly. You can always get yeah. it, man. You can get it. Yeah. Anybody can get it for sure. Did you guys think with the another person that you guys hear me talk about is a guy named Jose Aldo? He's mm. been fighting WC champion, mm-hmm. one of the greatest of all times, especially to defend his belt uh, in the UFC. Uh, legend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you think that uh, Jose Aldo lost or he won? I thought um, it's it's weird because I'm like in my head how I score fights. I think Jose Aldo won. I thought he won too. I, I thought he won. I, I th- thought it was like a draw. <laughs> yeah, it, even it, closer that, to that. I would, yeah. I would have been happy with that too. Yeah. But I thought Jose Aldo won. Um, I think like 
He defended, I think, almost literally every takedown. Yeah, I think right? they, they, I don't even think they gave him a takedown because the yeah. one looked like one. So yeah. it, yeah. it might have been yeah. zero takedowns, like 16 takedown yeah, defense. He he defended everything. Well. And and at that point, I'm looking at like who's doing the more effective striking then, right? Right. Jose Aldo. It's standing and it was I thought it was Jose Aldo. Yeah. What was the um, other guy's name? Uh, Marab, Marab Dwalish Dew- Philly. Yeah, it's yeah. just like such a complicated name. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like I don't I feel bad because I'm like, I still I I thought Jose Aldo won, but like now his last couple fights, I just don't know if he could be champ again. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like back back in the day, Jose Aldo was combos, output. He was aggressive. Yeah, I just feel like he slowed down. Yeah, and like that's he, exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. I ever since I feel like the knockout with Connor, he's just kind of went through some shit. Yeah. And and he's like slowed his pace down, has become more careful mm-hmm. and a little bit more strategic. But like from people watching from score standpoint, that could make it seem like you're not doing exactly. as much activity. Mm-hmm. Whereas this other dude constantly was pressuring. And and look, there wasn't like anything, any major hits landed, or, yeah. but it looked like he was doing more work. And I think that's why he got I the mean, Marab, yeah. If you look at the just significant strikes, Marab had basically nothing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, it, yeah. It, it's a bummer. Yeah. And it's just like. In that sense, I feel like if Jose Aldo could just put combos together, there was like, I remember, I still remember the one combo. He did like a one, two, and then, and then a the body hit, shot. Uh, no, it was yeah. a body, oh, shot, body shot. And I'm like, it landed so flush. I'm yeah. like, that's all he needs to do is just throw combos. But I think, like what you said, after that Connor fight, he turned more into a defensive fighter yeah. Yeah. where he's always waiting to counter. Um, and it's worked, but it's just like the, it's definitely not championship the, the elevation yeah. got to him too. You could tell oh, yeah, in that third sure. round because even after he well paced himself, third round he was gassed. He was yeah, and it he was, was just tired. That d- the defense at the takedown and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now for Marab, the, the sad thing about for Marab is like after this fight, his stock went down. Exactly, nobody gives a fuck yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I don't want to see you fight ever again. Yeah, yeah. which it kind of sucks because yeah, he has great takedowns. His wrestling, his grappling is amazing, and the problem with him is that. Josie Aldo is notoriously known for his, uh, his defense. Yeah. Like, it's really, really fucking hard to take fucking Josie Aldo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, it sucks when you win and then you get nothing from it. Exactly. Because like, yeah. I wouldn't care to see him fight. Exactly. It's just, it, same story with Costa, right? It's like, they, those two, they, they lost, or they won back to back, but no <laughs> one gave cares. a fuck about him. <laughs> like, fuck those guys, yeah. man. <laughs> it, it is a bummer. And especially like because of Marab and the whole thing with him and Aljo, they're like best friends and shit. And like they both kind of have a similar style where it's never it's never really like that exciting, right? You yeah. don't even really want to watch them fight yeah, that yeah. much. Exactly. And you're just like, all right. And then these are the two guys that we're dealing with now that are at the top that could be the champ. That's why everybody liked Habib so much. Yeah. Habib was grapple, but I'll smash your fucking exactly. face. He was mm-hmm. aggressive with yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. that's how you're supposed to. That's why people also like Islam. Mm-hmm. Islam goes in and he smashes you out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not just holding you against the cage and controlling the octagon. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people, if you watch the UFC... You know, listen, I appreciate all aspects of mixed martial arts, but even then for me, sometimes it's like, come on. Yeah. Like, this is this is much. You're just holding position just to hold. And, and you can tell because mm-hmm. you've watched so much MMA, right? And you've been watching it for so long and we've trained, even though we don't really do grappling, but we've seen it. We can tell when someone's holding somebody and they're literally just holding. Just that's to keep position. That's yeah. why everybody yeah. hates Josh Koscheck. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> that guy, dude. Yeah. Watching him fight pissed me off. Mm-hmm. I just like, I... Dude, when Tyron Woodley knocked him out, I think I fucking nutted. <laughs> I was like, "This oh. hot," because he got <laughs> hit. Yeah, and he bro. wobbled and he went yeah, boom. Yeah. boom. Yeah. I was so ha- I was like, "There's a god." Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Mm-hmm. And then fucking Paul Daly, who retired. Yeah, uh, he went to Bellador, Bellador, Bellator, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bellador. I thought you, Bellador. I thought you accidentally <laughs> fucked up two times yeah. in a row. Bellador, Bellador. Paul Daly too. If you watched his last fight and at Bellator, bro, yeah. he, he he'd retire with a knockout. I know, bro. Yeah. It was amazing. That's, that's the way to go, bro. He hits hard, yep. dude. Semtex, he hits, baby. Dog, he hits so fucking hard. It's unreal. Mm-hmm. His hands too look like Mickey Mouse gloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people yeah. just gifted so with the wide, mitts, man. Bro. Yeah, they're like wide and just like that's why, bro. He's punching you and he's covering like your whole <laughs> yeah, face. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The size of your face coming at you. But it makes an open pop slap. This is his whole fucking knuckle. The 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 craziest fight that happened. Though, man. Oh yeah, Kamaru Usman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look up this guy's pedigree. Guy has not been defeated in what 16, 19? I forgot sixteen or nineteen fights. It was uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think sixteen or I think fifteen oh, and going to sixteen. Yeah, maybe, yeah. or something yeah, like that. Because he was yeah. gonna tie Anderson Silva. Yeah, yeah Anderson, Anderson Silva's record for the longest 16. like win yeah. streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Com- that doesn't even count those Ultimate Fighters because they don't count those fights. Right. Oh, yeah, those are true. exhibitions. That's so true. like. 
he's technically won like almost 20 fights. Yeah. 20 in plus a row. fights in a row, man. Yeah. yeah. Unstoppable. This guy, extremely high accolades for wrestling and grappling, mm -hmm. right? A nightmare to deal with, which is, is his actual nickname, the Nigerian yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Um, also a little corny on the mic. Not a, not a right. big fan of his nah, mic talk. Yeah, yeah his yeah, mic game yeah. is pretty weak. Yeah. He talks, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's like, who are you trying to serenade <laughs> well, right now, no, bro? Oh, you he's always fight. doing this, too. Yeah. yeah. Licking his lips. Oh, shit. Yeah. You, you don't understand. I'm a dog, Joe. <laughs> when I, when I, <laughs> he always says the name, Joe. Yeah. I hate that shit. <laughs> Joe, I'm a dog, Joe. right? Everybody tries to take me down. They don't know me. Yeah. They don't know what they mean. Yeah. Yo, I read this comment that had me dying. Somebody says, Kamaru Usman talks like like he's telling a story over a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to scare him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his voice gets all low. <laughs> I hate that, bro. I don't know why it bugs me so much, though, when he always says the name. Joe, listen, Joe. They don't know me, Joe. Yeah. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do work, Joe. I'm yeah. like, why do you keep saying his name, bitch? <laughs> he he like, knows. Know who you're talking yeah. to right now. Yeah. I'm just living, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God damn, yeah, bro. This fool on the mic is literally the worst. And I got to tell you, too, the one thing that I'm not looking forward to because Leon Edwards became the champion. Mm -hmm. Leon Edwards is worse than him on oh, the mic. Bro, there's sometimes Leon it's is almost so like a steep A shit. Well, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. bro, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> yeah. you just said, bro. Exactly. But you're the good at fighting, so I'll watch you. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm gonna get the belt. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, oh, yeah, you know, and then, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna get the belt. Yeah. And then, oh, all right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he mumbles so much. He needs like a like a dictation coach mm -hmm. because it's not like his accent, like, like the UK accent or whatever, yeah. wherever he's from. It's the fact that he doesn't. He mumbles all of his words. He doesn't yeah. know how to enunciate. Yeah. So it just, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Yep. So he needs somebody to teach him how to speak on the mic or just speak <laughs> yeah. in general. Isn't it crazy when you hear them talk, but like, I'm sure if when he's back home, people understand him like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like easy. I'm like, bro, how y'all understand? Sometimes even when Patty's talking, right, like, what right. the fuck yeah, did Patty's you just say? Patty's accent is pretty thick, yeah. Yeah. you know? They're like, God damn, they use all these weird words and shit for certain things. Yeah. You're like, their damn. slangs, their, their English Dude, slangs. Remember yeah. when uh, McGregor got his leg fucking broken and they were interviewing <laughs> after? Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck he just Dan's said. Like, Arm, Arm. So what? I didn't Listen understand here, what Joe. he was saying. And then finally, people started translating it on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then I could hear the words. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, He goes, there was no check. <laughs> there was no check. Yeah. I'm like, like, David, no check. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Yo, yeah. who is that? What is he saying? Yeah. So if you watch this fight, Kamar Usman is a nightmare to deal with. Mm. He was fucking up Leon Edwards four rounds mm. in a row. Arguably one where he got, he actually got taken down by Leon yeah, Edwards. Yeah, yeah. That there first was round was down. really surprising. Yeah. And I do, I personally feel like it did, it was more in the sense of it took Kumaru off guard, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, don't think he, I don't think he expected it because when they were, when they were like uh, clinched up, yeah. Kumaru was just standing straight up. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, he wasn't even thinking like, oh, this man's about to go on a, on a you know, for a takedown. Right, right. right. Um, but then when he had his back, I don't know about you, but I was like, oh, this oh might he be might, motherfucker, he might get this, bro. Yeah. Cause like, it doesn't really seem like, you know, Justin Gaethje's in that camp too. And like what I've heard about Justin Gaethje from people that I know that have worked with them, they don't train any jujitsu. Jesus. Mm. So he doesn't, Justin Gaethje. I yeah. don't know about the same for Kumaru, but yeah. it seemed like jujitsu wise, Leon Edwards was doing better. Mm. Yeah. And at one point I was like, oh, bro, he's about to submit Kumaru Usman. And Kumaru Usman, his first loss was by rear naked choke. Exactly. Right. So I was right. like, oh, yeah, fuck, he's about to get him right yeah. now, bro. But then, yeah, obviously after that round, the table In my mind, turn. I had, I already assumed that Kumaru Usman was going to win, mm -hmm. but I wanted Leon Edwards to win. Mm -hmm. So if some, you know, I was asked like, who's, who do you, who are you betting on? I'm betting on Leon. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, Kamara was so hard to deal with. He's oh, yeah. pretty much good everywhere. And you know, the funny thing is, is that I did agree with Leon in an interview. The one of the few words I could understand that he said. <laughs> he was like, like hey, shot, boom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he said, he's fallen in love with his striking. Mm -hmm. And literally that's what happened. 100. This whole fucking fight was a movie because mm -hmm. You see this guy dejected, his coaches yeah, in bro. his face. Yeah. Get your, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. Come on, Leon. Yeah. Come on, Keep Leon. in mind, if you guys don't know, his nickname is Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. It was like a Rocky yeah, story, yeah. man. He went, it thing. was like Mick. Yeah, you know, Mickey stop. fucking, you know. Stop feeling sorry yeah. for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dean, um, what's his face? Dean, Dean Thomas. Dean Thomas. Dean Th said, this, yeah. said the best thing. He goes, you could tell that how terrible he's feeling because he's he can't he even make eye his, contact and i didn't notice that until he mm -hmm. mentioned it. he was yeah. looking away and yeah. he wouldn't look at his because he was so ashamed, ashamed. of himself yeah. yeah and then that next round he goes stop fucking feeling sorry for you so get your head in the fucking game mm -hmm. yeah like and then dog fourth round comes in and i shit you fucking not 
Ed Park was with me, and I go, the left kick, it's there. The whole fight, just fucking throw it. Who yeah. cares? And I say that, and he throws it. I stop. We looked at each other. I was like, God. <laughs> Uh, he hurt me. Hey, David, they the David coach of the year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The exactly. only reason why I thought, and I'm not sure if people noticed this too, mm. I assumed that the left kick was there is because he kept scooping. Yeah. For that, for that he low always kick. Scoops. I'm like, dog, the left kick is mm -hmm. there. You're a southpaw. Launch that shit. Who cares? It's the last round. Yeah. And he fucking did yeah. it. And, and I think one important thing to point out in that moment too was it, it was one of the first times Kamara was backpedaling. He was mm -hmm. pressuring Leon the whole fight, but he yep. got a little complacent. He just like <clears throat> taking it easy and it cost yeah. him, man. And I do want to say this too, because I had somebody, I was talking about this fight particularly yesterday at the shop and they're like, damn, it's so crazy. Cause it was just like such a normal kick. I was like, no, normal I was like, so then you don't really understand kickboxing striking then, right? I'm not even saying I'm the best striker or anything like that, but I want Everybody, if you think it's a normal kick, to try and mask your right, kick right, right behind where, your right hand. Right, where they don't see hard. it. And it's so fucking hard. Yeah. There's only a couple people that do it really well. Like Robert Whitaker does it really well. That's mm -hmm. one of his favorite things. Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Carlos Condit did it. Yeah, Leon Edwards, obviously. Um, there's that fighter, Brian Battle. He just fought a oh, couple yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, he yeah, knocked yeah. out that other guy. But like that shit's so hard. And, and that it, wasn't, it wasn't like Kamaru technically wasn't doing anything wrong in the sense of pairing the cross, right? But because that skill like that Leon has and he's able to throw that yeah, combo, yeah. like the parry was perfect. Uh, Kamaru, bah, parries, comes off to the side. Yeah. Just that that right. kick was so perfectly placed and hidden yeah. that, man, it was, it was. I remember I got kind of heat when I heard this place. Oh, it's just a normal kick. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I'm like, I want you to go fucking try throwing that shit, bro, yeah. because I bet you you'll get your ass knocked out trying to do that shit, bro. Yeah. It's so fucking hard. The reason why that kick was so technically beautiful was that I can try to do that kick, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll see that kick coming from a mile away. 100%. Right. It was like a half second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was literally fake the jab, yeah. threw this cross, and yeah. the leg was coming. It yeah, was so well, he, his, precise. You could even see it on the cross. His, his, he's not even making a fist. It's mm -hmm. like kind of open-handed because yeah. that's what the setup yeah. was for, right? It, it, it just, it's perfect. Yeah. It literally made Kamara Usman right. parry. Right. Like that's the goal. Is right. Bop, bop, and you're yeah. coming right over. And it made him come, yeah. throw his head it's straight. Too late, too late Ooh, at that it's point. It's such a... a it's it's a great technique, a lot harder to do than you mm -hmm. think it is. Because so a lot of people are like, well, more people should do this. Yeah, a hundred percent, but it's just really you hard. Can. It's I mean, yeah, hard. You can, yeah, you can right. say it. you should do something. Especially like you doing it. It's a lot of shit. You have to be flexible enough. Yeah. But like you just said too, it's like at that point, like because because Maru was doing good with his striking, right? It, but he wasn't like technical. It was just like at the point of Leon was always worrying about these takedowns, always on his back foot. But then uh, I think also Dean Thomas had said something and then DC agreed with him. It's like, uh, Kamaro could take this round off. Yeah. And easily yeah. coast. Win. Yeah. And he's like, but he's not going to. And mm -hmm. uh, DC was like, yeah, of course, he's never going to do that. Yeah. I feel like that's actually what cost him in this fight. Exactly. It's, it's that's what cost 100%. him. 100%. He could have just went and held him up against yeah, the fence and won the fight. Him. Yeah. Because he was, it's not like he was really pounding him when he was on the ground either. Mm -hmm. So if he did one of those things where he just, yeah. He wanted to knock out. 100%. And that's why Leon was right. You fell in love with your striking. Yeah. And the thing about that is, too, when you look at all of Kamaru Usman's knockouts, right, and the way he's done it, Emphatically, mm -hmm. the reason why these things happen is not because his striking is amazing. It's because the threat of the take count takedown is yeah, so exactly. not there. Mm -hmm. So people have to worry about so many things with him. I mean, just to give you an example, right? There was a part in this fight. I'm not sure if you guys remember where he fainted a leg grab. Yeah, and then, and then, then he went for it, and then and he actually went. So he's like, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. He just went for it. Yeah, That's, it was so weird. That is how much he has people worried. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. when he faints, they they were afraid that he was going to come up top, so they just gave him the leg, and he yeah. goes, oh, I have the leg? Yeah. I'm just going to grab it. Yeah. yeah, And he took him down. That whole last round, he could have pressured forward 100%. and just took him to the cage and smashed his face out. Mm -hmm. Which, by the over. way, yeah. that's what something Habib would have done. Of yeah. course, yeah. Habib's like, I will never give you an opportunity yeah. to win. Exactly. And Kamar Usman gave him the opportunity. He stayed at kicking range to a southpaw. Yeah. Yep. He's very dangerous with his kicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leon Edwards is has been practicing MMA. He has no other modality of fighting. No karate, no nope. nothing, no kickboxing base. It's MMA. That's why he is one of the best, most well-rounded fighters in 
Yeah. It's so crisp. See, so fucking so crisp. crisp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You would think that he trained like traditional Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he didn't. It's just he's just been doing MMA. And that fucking left kick was Ugh. shin to head. Oh my god. Man. The you, most perfect kick that you could ever land and on the somebody. Sweat right? Out like Jorge Masvidal. Yeah. Yeah. There's like all you see just all this yeah. fucking sweat just Bro, drop I saw up. this meme and yeah. it was like the perfect because he was knocked out with his eyes open, right? Yeah. yeah. His eyes were wide open. So yeah. there's this meme and the guy's like this and it's Chris Tucker's body and it's Kamal. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what you want to motherfuckers kick me? <laughs> there was one that I saw that had me dying. And it's not even that funny. I just really like this song that people have been using. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those trends I really enjoy. But he gets knocked out, and it's a picture of Kamaru Usman with his eyes open. And it's the song, I want to go. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bruh. But it, it, it's it's cool. Like, I'm, I've never really been, like, the biggest Leon Edwards fan but, like, seeing him win and, like, you know, you got to see his whole story on the countdown, right? His dad was murdered when he was 13 yeah. because he was, like, a drug dealer and shit like that. He was going down the same path. So And I would never know because he t- always tells a story, but I don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I had to hear the yeah. Leon Edwards. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, okay, yeah. now I can know yeah. what the fuck's going on. But uh, it was it, cool to see him win, you know? And, like, he's, like, t- talking on his phone with his mom. He's, like, crying, you know, yeah. all that type of shit. Look at me now. Yeah. Look and at it, me now. he made a point where I was even in my head, I was like, I, I was that same way. Dana White was like, if Kamar Usman isn't here, Colby Covington's your champion. Right. It's like, bro, we all kind of wrote off Leon Edwards. Yeah, yeah. He showed us how fucking good he was in this fight because he was getting taken down, but he was getting up. Like there yeah. was a lot His of times he was, was great. Yeah, he yeah. was getting up. Yeah. And he was at some points making it a striking fight, but like for a while until that last minute, he was nervous because of the takedown. Yeah. And like Jorge now, like I've wanted that fight, right? I'm like, Jorge, you about to get your ass fucked right, right. if you oh, fight Leon Edwards, He got Edwards, lucky, bro. dude. Yeah. yeah. The thing about Leon Edwards, and I think I became a big fan of, fan of him after the, even though it ended in a, in a the DQ DS fight. The Bilal? Oh, no. Bilal, Bilal Muhammad. Bilal. Yeah. Oh. When I saw how bad he was fucking up Bilal, oh, yeah, and Bilal's yeah. no bitch, dude. Yeah, Bilal's dope. Poke, man. Yeah. He, I mean, you could talk about that DQ all you want. He was going to die that fight. Yeah. yeah. And you see what Bilal's doing now, or Bilal's yeah. doing now, right? He's just mauling everybody. He couldn't take Leon Edwards right. down, and Leon Edwards was just lighting his ass up. Bro. I think that's when you, yeah. you recognize how great a fighter is, is like when a certain type of fighter, you see this type of fighter doing something all the time, but he can't do it do against it. Exactly. A, another fighter. And you're like, oh, he's just having an off day. No, it's just he's that good. Yeah. You know? And we always talk about this too. Um, or people in general always heard this phrase. They always say that you know, the downfall of any person is their pride and ego. Mm-hmm. And you could see it in Kamaru Usman. And I didn't really want to believe it, but that's what Leon kept on saying. He goes, Your your head's way too big because <laughs> <literally> <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood. Literally had figured it. It's yeah. too big of a target, yeah. man. I'm gonna yeah. crack and that he, shit. He's, <laughs> he, he legit told him too, where he says, there's levels to this shit in wrestling. Like you could be doing it as much as you want, but you're never going to get to my level. Guess what? Same shit goes exactly. for striking. Right. Same 100%. shit goes for striking. For sure. You for thought sure. that you had your elite level style of wrestling with your striking because you fell in love with your knockouts. Mm-hmm. You are not Leon Edwards. Yep. Leon Edwards striking is crisp. It's I, so good. I got I got really hyped when I saw uh, the pad work of Leon throwing those elbows. I know, yeah, bro, that dude. was nasty. Yeah. When he was Duh. throwing that shit, and then someone's made a clip now where they're putting it together because he finishes with the left mm-hmm. kick. Yeah. And so it's like the elbow, 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 and then right when the left kick's about to hit the pad, it's him knocking out Kamaru Usman. Right, right. You're like, uh, he's just, yeah, he's one of those guys where it's like what you just said. I think Kamaru Usman fighting Jorge, knocking him out early, and then the two fights with Colby, right, which is a striking fight, but they're both not strikers, kind of probably got to his head a little bit that he's an elite striker. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, pound for pound list. And, you yeah, know, like, yeah. he's just and like, he, I'm I that mean, dude. He went to Hollywood. He yeah. got a movie and all that shit, and you know, but. He's going down the Tyron Woodley path. Yeah, because right. he started acting and doing the right. rapping shit. Yeah. Right. Terrible rapper, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm not calling no root. Yeah, I'm not calling no root. Yeah, I don't know what he dog. I don't know what the fuck Tyron Woodley was thinking. Like you're a terrible rapper. Yeah, and I'll say it to your face, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's he's yeah. actually he's actually really bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> like fucking Bryce Mitchell's way better than him. Yeah, dude. And Bryce, dude. Yeah, surprisingly, Bryce Mitchell actually. I was listening to show. I'm like, oh yeah, some hard ass shit. Kind freestyle, of. bro. Yeah. yeah, he got bars. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I can't believe. Bryce Mitchell this fucking but, honky tonk boy is better than fucking Tyron Woodley <laughs> I, I'm excited now but I think the cool thing with Leon like I said because I was never a big fan but because of this showing it really puts in perspective like like even for me with Hamzat I still was on the train like Hamzat about to just run through everybody I don't yeah. give a fuck yeah. now I'm like Man, Leon's a hard fight for him. Right. Yeah. I still think Leon now well, Leon's a hard ass fucking well, fight for him. Well, remember, 
Hamza, uh, Leon said, I want Hamza. Yeah, because yeah. he couldn't get fired. Well, yeah. let's talk about that for a second, too. How shit? I've never seen Bad luck. an yeah, athlete dude. with such shit luck like this guy. I'm like, how does it's it's almost like it should have scripted. Yeah. Like, how does this happen to you time and time again? How many fights was he not able to do? And then he gets COVID and like, mm-hmm. you know, all, all this, this shit, shit man. And Dana White said it himself, he has the worst yeah. luck I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. He, said, he said, I've never seen anything like, like this. Like, Tony Ferguson is one of the bad luck people, too, especially right. with his fights with Habib. Yeah, oh, more yeah. so that fight was cursed with them. Leon but, Edwards is just cursed yeah. in general. Any fight he was trying to do, it just was not happening for him. And, and what exactly what you're saying, it shows also why Leon's so dangerous because in his mindset, when they finally started talking about it, right, I think it was an interview with Ariel Hawani. He was like, I don't care. It's just going to make it so much more sweet when I win the title. Mm. Yeah. So, like, he didn't even care. He wasn't letting any of that affect him. He's like, oh, yeah. I don't care. Just makes it even better when I win the title because I've had to wait so long. So, yeah. I'm like, Ooh. people. People did a compilation clip of Leon Edwards uh, getting yelled at by his coach mm-hmm. and kind of losing the fight and being dejected to the win. Bro, I teared up. I was yeah. like, oh, shit, man. Yeah. This is beautiful, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's a movie, it's man. It's still literally motivational. Rocky. Like, he's not talking about anything technical. He's just mm. trying to motivate this guy. Yeah. Like, come on, man. You you know who you are like fucking dig deep man yeah. this and is what you wanted screaming into the camera everybody doubted me you yeah. said I couldn't do it yeah. well I'm fucking here I'm the champ yeah. that shit made me feel so yeah. fucking yeah. good Got and hyped. they were playing the Rocky music yeah. too yeah. after you <laughs> won bro they are blasting Rocky Yo, music Adrian. I was like oh fuck bro. <laughs> God, he did such an amazing job at that and like just to show his heart and that's mm-hmm. why I like this card so much you saw it from Luke Rockhold yep. and you also saw it from fucking Leon Edwards mm-hmm. you see heart and heart has a lot to do with the sport yeah. like just going in and training every, especially in his position too like mm-hmm. you have to he got zero respect from everybody and he hasn't lost in 13 fights yep 13 fucking fights that's what's and I, I was kind of on that train too where I've kind of just like Leon Edwards whatever yeah you just write him off yeah because like, we haven't seen him fight in so I know, long exactly. I know. Yeah. we just had to be reminded but I think mm-hmm. I think the reminder did come back in the Nate Diaz fight even though you know Nate slipped in that last shot to wobble yeah. him but like he was dominating Nate through 100%. the whole fucking fight but that's he, also like the luck thing right yeah bruh? he did so good in that fight yeah. and all everybody ever talks about like, <laughs> yeah, he has that rock right yeah. Yeah, yeah, that bro. last one. Like, he almost got knocked yeah, out, though. Dude, you know? That's somebody who lost stock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the loser won. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Nate Diaz, yeah. But he actually knocked him the fuck mm-hmm. out in yeah. the last round. Yeah. Dude. Dude, this 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 sport is so fucking insane. Mm-hmm. All I could say this past weekend was, this is why I love the UFC. Right, mm-hmm. right. Fucking insane yeah. matchups, dude. Yep. I love this sport so much. Watching that shit was like... Every all the years that I spent watching the UFC, it, this is why. Yeah, yep. I yeah. fucking exactly. love it. I feel like for people like us too that have been watching it forever, right? If you're just getting into MMA, you're kind of lucky because like you're seeing like we're just getting the top athletes That's true. now, kids, That's people true. that have been doing it forever. So when, we kids. Were, when we were watching it back, it's like Tank Abbott, like <laughs> right. some fucking dude. Tank Abbott was yeah. the reigning. Champ. It, it was, was, like it was that cool because yeah. you just watch people fight, but yeah. people weren't particularly skilled, right? Yeah. And then, but we've got to see like so many generations of like even when Chuck and Randy and like Leo to all those people right. coming up, John Jones is beginning, right? You got yeah. to see all this shit and the evolution. Now it's just right now, like like I don't know if you've been watching the Tuesday night contender series. Yes. Like l- last night, bro, they had some crazy like like 21 year old you're like dude this kid is so fucking good, good. And he's been training since he was like five but he's been training mma and that's yeah. the difference now is you're getting in in 10 years this sport's about to be wild because sure. it's For kids sure. starting like at three to For five sure. in mma it's yeah. not like oh they did boxing and then they're going to start wrestling when they're 18 it's like they're doing everything to be an mma no, that's a fighter. great point to make because like it's becoming more of a traditional sport yep. now right where like you said People have an aspiration from kids like, oh, I want to be an NBA star. Like when we were growing up, like five years old, right? Like I want to play in the NBA, whatever. Now these kids are like, I want to be a fighter. And then they have now the the gyms and stuff in place where they can actually train at and learn these skills. And it's just also the the physical science behind everything is so developed now. Yeah, right. So there's no, well, you know, when I was weight training in high school, it was just more weight, more weight, more weight. No break days, no nothing. Uh, You would jump from, you know, benching 225 and then you add, another 45 play. <laughs> There's no increments in between, yeah. you know, and I tore my shoulder that yeah, way. Yeah. And every time I injured myself, I just kept injuring over and over. Yep. And there was just no, just physical science behind this stuff. Mm-hmm. Everything is so, you can get stuff on apps and phones now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're seeing yeah. these athletes get better and better, faster and stronger. And because they're doing things way smarter. Yep. Right? More efficient. Way more efficient. So like now, like I, I follow this kid named uh, Joseph Brown. Mm-hmm. And this kid is like a Taekwondo champ, but he's also like a boxing champ. Mm. And he puts both of them together. What the fuck? He's mm. a Taekwondo champ and 
at a boxing gym. Donkey, That's this, crazy. This kid, yeah. His hands are amazing. Yeah. And I didn't even know because I was following him for his boxing yeah. shit. Uh-huh. And then I was like, wait, this is Taekwondo? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, then he started kickboxing. How, how yeah. old is he? He's like, I think he's like 18. Wow. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Bro, Super young. You're going to start seeing that a lot more now. Yeah. Like in the next like 10, 15 years. It's like, I feel like it can either go two ways. Like, the fights are going to be so fucking sick or they're just going to be, like, so even that you're kind of like, eh. Yeah, you know that's, that's true. But that's like, true. Like, I think in, like, two weeks, there's a 17-year-old fighting on Dana White's Tuesday Night Consider. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. He's a Jose Aldo. Yeah. You're just like, bro, it's, it's crazy to you're see You're going to see a lot shit. of these fighters, too, just kind of... I, I think Adesanya is, like, the prototype for somebody who's very, very well-rounded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then we're, we're going to see a lot more of these Adesanyas. Yeah. Amazing striking, amazing takedown defense. Um but the one th- obviously he doesn't have so much the grappling sense. Well, he hasn't he doesn't need to. Yeah, he doesn't. He hasn't had to. <laughs> Everybody's so scared at of getting all. knocked out. Yeah, but they just can't get to his legs. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, he's so long, right? Yeah, super long, yeah. and just all the feints and stuff too. Uh, what's his his teammate fought? Uh, that big gigantic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forget his name though. Oh uh, um uh, yeah, uh, Carlos Olberg. Oh, was it Carlos Olberg? No, it was the kid who won with the front kick to the gut. Oh um. Is he his teammate? I don't. He I don't hasn't remember. fought in a bit, but he yeah. he's a part of City Kickboxing. He's a mm. big ass like uh, uh like Polynesian dude. I think he's a mixed Polynesian kid. Uh, okay, yeah. and he won with this fucking front kick up the middle. Yeah, super hard. Yeah, KO. Mm. Yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. dude. That was one of the undercard fights, right? Yeah, it was yeah. one of the pre- yeah. even yeah. the prelims fights were fucking fire. Yeah, dude. yeah. This whole card was insane, man. Like I, I, that same night, I went to the garage. I started punching shit. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. After Leon fucking knocked him out, I tried to emulate the same combo. I almost hurt myself, bro. That shit's hard. <laughs> yeah. dude. I fucking hurt my hip. Yeah. I, I, there was a clip of me throwing a head kick, which I thought was pretty dope. And I saw the 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 clip. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I was like, that shit's hell, bro. Ugly. Hiding your kicks behind a punch. Is so hard. Yeah. Like that's top. It's it's top level. You, you know, you have to have some skill to do it. You can't just like I've been doing kickboxing for two months. I yeah. could throw that combo. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. it's harder than you think, no. man. Fighting is so weird, man. And like <clears throat> some people too, they take like for I, I feel like we do it for fun, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes like when you spar, some people who take it so seriously, it, it kind of annoys me. Actually, only recently, we're not saying names, but yeah. you were there too. But we, I was you know kind of going at it with yeah. a friend of ours, and you could tell like. Usually when we spar, it's very fun and casual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there was a little switch that yeah. happened. And I was like, you're taking this a little more personally yeah. than it should. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I think it like hurt his pride or ego a little mm-hmm. bit. Well, specific, well, first of all. Did you get him with a shot? I got him with a lot of shots. But it was escalating to a point that it didn't have to. And I remember as we were sparring, like, dude, why are we talking shit? Yeah. <laughs> and that you know, made me click a little bit. I was like, oh, we're not having fun anymore. Yeah. Right? And that's when it got... A little, because I remember too. There was this part where, uh, listen, I've long, I, I, I kick a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And so, in a boxing sense, I probably won't be able to do much. But if we had kickboxing, it's just a different game, yeah. right? Also, too, I'm a lot more fit. Mm-hmm. So, literally, got to I remember I, I connected. I hit him with the with a check hook and a cross. He goes, "That was like you didn't do shit." <laughs> that shit actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. what's going on?" Mm-hmm. Right? Because usually it's like, "Oh, that was tight," but yeah. he was talking shit. And I when I, I had to sit and think about it, I was like, "Why did it get to that point?" And I think with somebody like him is that fighting to him is everything. Mm-hmm. He is the guy that fights really well. Mm. You start taking that away from him, it starts fucking with his ego. Especially when it's against uh, someone that's, oh, I train three times a week. And, yeah. you know, I do this for fun and I'm just a fan. Yeah. And then it's someone that's like, this is my life. And then they're getting pieced up by oh, this. Okay. Sometimes those it gets, yeah. I see. And it's, it's just, listen, I'm not amazing at this sport, right? Yeah. But I, I do have a competitive edge and... I'm not terrible, mm-hmm. right? And also, too, as I get coached, and look, I'm not doing this often, right? We're, mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't trained in, what, three weeks? <laughs> yeah, right. We, wow, we, right? we train maybe yeah. once, twice a month, yeah. right? Yeah. But I also really love this sport. Mm-hmm. I'm also not going to let somebody just walk me down and beat me up. It's yeah. just not going to happen, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a samurai. <laughs> I'm a samurai. I'm a samurai. I'll cut through air. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, all of us, too, even though for us, our, our, I think when we get better, it takes a lot longer. Uh-huh. But, if, but we are getting better a little bit by a little bit because yeah. we're not really competitive. Mm-hmm. He has to cope with the idea that, guess what? We're going to start m- matching each other. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to stay here the whole time. Yeah. And, but, you know, we sparred before. Yeah. And it was always a wash. She would always just take me out. Yeah. But now it's starting mm-hmm. to. <laughs> level out a little bit and he's feeling yeah. a little and insecure there, I was like, oh maybe that's why he got a little upset yeah. yeah because it was oh david's not hitting me once or twice like i'm it's a lot now <laughs> it's like, yeah it's a lot it's like check hook crosses fucking mm-hmm. like 10 body kicks back straight kicks to the head low kicks everything yeah, yeah. so 
for me, it's like, oh, so you were okay with it when you were beating me up. Exactly. You know, but mm-hmm. when you were beating me up, I was like, oh, this is dope. And so when we were- <laughs> Oh, this is dope, <laughs> yeah. my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, learning. I'm, I'm learning some yeah. shit. But mm-hmm. then now that the levels are starting to even up a little bit, it starts to hurt their ego. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought like, oh, I, I didn't really like that too much. But he's not really coming out that much anymore. I noticed. Sounds like, like, yeah. It sounds like he's, you made him feel insecure, man. But he shouldn't though, cause he's still mm-hmm. better than me. But yeah. it's just- But, but you, can't, you can't control, you know, <laughs> yeah. what goes through somebody's mind when they start to feel like they're getting attacked. Well, in this sense, literally and yeah. figuratively, right? I think <laughs> that's what's good though about like, especially, well, like our our main training group, we mm. don't really ever have egos, right? Because <laughs> like I'll, I'll I'll spar and I'm literally not. I'm just gonna sit there and let you fucking hit me. But in my head, <laughs> yeah. I'll throw like a couple shots yeah. and then those two land. I'm like, yeah. nice. I knew if I get that full power, <laughs> probably hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and two, I just don't care. Like yeah. it doesn't matter to me. I'm like, I know I'm sparring. This is the time I'm about to get hit like a shit ton. I think I think what the mindset here is. Having fun and learning versus winning and losing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people no are exactly. winning and losing. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. man. I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, too, I also have a certain level of realization, right? Let's say Alex and I spar, right? Mm. I'm longer. And at right now, I'm a little more the cardiovascular. I'm a lot more fit. Hey, nah, nah, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, hey, hold hey, on. Man, he's been working on his bowling. Hey, bro, my bowling. Hey, this yeah. arm. I need, you, I need you to be quiet. Yeah. Talk about the biggest sandbag ever. I thought I was a sandbag. This little sandbag is like a motherfucker. Hey, but I also time. know, like in a real fighting sense, yeah. if he hits me, it's gonna be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like I've had this full like hit me maybe 30% and my fucking forearm was crawling, <laughs> you know? So I understand like in this sparring set, like let's say we did a real fucking match. I don't think it'll, I don't think I'm going to win just mm-hmm. because I know that if he throws a full kick at me, even if I block it, yeah. it's going to make me yeah. act a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like See, that I think different. I think D- David would be able to keep me away. Oh, with this length. But that's the difference is mm. we don't really have like an ego like, oh, I'm going to fuck everybody yeah, up. Right, bro. right, right. And I feel like sometimes, because it's happened, we've had other people come in where they have these egos and then there's going all hard and all this shit and still we're like just staying composed but it's like bro chill yeah bro. we're trying to get we're just, people's yeah, this, bro. Bro. we're just trying to chill and train man like yeah. you motherfuckers taking it so serious yeah and i think that's wise because they take it so serious and like what we said we start like doing shit to them and they're just like what the fuck this motherfucker shouldn't be doing this yeah, to me. yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like well yeah. you know if you turn it up then we'll turn it up too exactly mm-hmm. it's like i understand that you know you know, this person too, like skill wise is better than me, but I'm not going to let you just do shit to mm-hmm. me. You know what I mean? It's just not going to fucking happen. <laughs> you know what? But whenever you fucking get a group of guys and it's a physical activity, there's mm-hmm. going to be that much cheese mo. There's going to yeah. be like that flexing that happens. Some, some dude is always going to be an Alex Tate, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, that's what it's going to be. What was really cool was uh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Jeff was so dope to us. Shred, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, he came in and I, I was watching the video like that boy was like piecing me up, but it <laughs> was, was all bro, it was never like I never felt like oh damn he's trying to like prove something mm. you know because like, I landed a couple shots too here and there but like it would never because I've had sparring matches too where you're feeling like I'll land a couple things and I feel like the power level goes from here mm-hmm. I'm staying here but then all of a sudden uh, they're right here yeah. and I'll stay there the whole time yeah. you know like yeah. I'm just like whatever like let them fucking do their shit but like. He was really cool, and like you don't get that that often, where someone will come in and be so controlled, and just you guys can flow and have a good time. Dude, pro MMA fighter comes mm-hmm. in, super nice guy, mm-hmm. and I'm getting tired. And when you get tired, you throw a little harder. But yeah. he just slipped it, and he just tap tap me yeah. the whole time. Exactly. And eventually, I just felt like throwing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bro, that shit was so. I was watching that video, and yeah. it reminded me how tired I got yeah. because I'm like, bro, like he moves so much, uh-huh. so it's more of like you're missing and I you're see. getting tired. I you're see. like. Fuck, bro. Like, like, there's a really great clip that you could see of him just dipping. He fakes and he throws an overhead and yeah. he pulls it and he just taps me in the yep. face. Uh, he could have blasted me to another universe, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. But as a pro fighter, he's he knows his skill level and he wants us to have fun too. Yeah. And even before he goes, hey, on these spar rounds, have fun. Mm-hmm. He goes, do more head movement. Do the stuff that you probably typically wouldn't do in yeah. a fight because this is where you get to fun, have fun and experiment. Move your head a little bit. Work with head movement. You know, throw a little more stuff, and it's all good. Like, yeah. don't worry about being perfect. And I think that's what happens to us because we're, we're we're looking at so much in a fight sense that we think that if we get touched, we're knocked out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he goes, even in fights, it doesn't happen. Right. Of course. Yeah. You know, you get tapped, you get touched. I mean, a unless bit, you get touched by me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we when we first started sparring, we, we were doing low kick sparring. Yeah. And I remember like we were throwing kind of hard. But the difference was, he was like, hey, pretty dope. And I limped away. <laughs> you know, I couldn't walk for like four days. I, was like, hey. I still remember when I did that one random fucking fight. I did this one random Muay Thai fight, like on like a week and a half notice, right? Uh-huh. And I still remember because I lost. 
Um, but afterwards, like I was fine, right? Like I felt good. Like I had like this little bruise on my on my um, my forehead. Mm. But then the guy came, like the the guy that I fought came, and he was six five. Like I think he was gigantic, yeah, former like, D one football player. Yeah, I am. And I'm five six, right? Yeah. So it was a big difference. But like I had a pretty good like towards the end of the last round because mm. that's when I started hurting him. Uh, but like he was limping and limping, like because I I started landing he these low kicks, blasted these leg kicks, <laughs> like, oh, and man. I was just I was just, at that point I was just like boom, yeah. just throwing him hard, yeah. And like he came by and I was like, hey, good fight, and he just was fucking blew me off. <laughs> and his coach was like, yeah, he came up to me, he's like, he's sorry, man, he's really mad because he like hurt his leg. And uh, I was like, yeah, we're fighting, yeah, yeah we're fighting, you yeah. pussy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Also, too, like I, I'm not just saying this. That guy was running out of the fucking. The oh, square bro, all the time, to, bro. to avoid hits yeah. like a little bitch. So was, I don't want to hear sucked, shit. Bro. Yeah. It sucks so mad, so much because like I was. My goal was to try and close him off so I can try and land some shit in the inside. He's hella tall. Because in the, right in the beginning, like yeah. right when we started, he him just right down the middle. I'm just feeling my head go yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom, and there was a separation. I'm like. Fuck, this fool's long <laughs> as fuck, bro. And like, cause he's really long yeah. and just tall. And he was trying to knock you out. Yeah, which he's not even a, supposed to be like that. Immediate, it bro. It sounds to me like it, it reminds me when you just what you're describing of like Bob Sapp. Remember back in the day yeah. where he would come. No, and that's as what soon it was. As he gets yeah. touched, he's like, oh shit. He it was. It was such up. a whole thing. I know we talked about it before, but yeah. like when we got there, we were supposed to be the last fight, right? Because we were the heavyweights. Yeah. I was just like, all right, cool. And then like one fight happens, me and Nico doing like maybe a one minute round of just hands just to start like, oh, let's keep you warm while we wait, right? And like we're sitting there, we're watching these kids fight, the fight ends, and then all of a sudden we're fighting. Mm. I'm like, whoa, what the <laughs> fuck? So I had to run and go find my shin guards, yeah. put them on. And like we only had, like, I think it was like a week and a half. So like we were like, this guy might be taller, remember? So I was doing all these inside low kicks. So that's mm -hmm. like what the first like round and a half were, or, mm -hmm. like me trying to land it. And it was weird because I kept hearing Nick say, outside, go outside. But I'm like, inside? Yeah. <laughs> inside? Like, I just, for some reason, it was hard. But then. Yeah, but the outside look is what fucked him up. Oh, I started working a lot. I even made him fucking almost do a full 360 yeah. on wow. one of them. Yeah. And, His leg kicks were um, fucking hard. So, like, the, the problem with that is that when you do these PKB matches, if you guys ever get to do one. What's PKB stand for? Um, I don't know. Punk killer bitches. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. yeah. But it's, it's basically <laughs> these, they're kind of, they're sanctioned, I guess, quote unquote. Yeah. But they're amateur fights, shin guards. You can't knock people okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Because that was what threw me off when he said the shin guard. So yeah. you do wear yeah. protective yeah, gear. Shin guards, you Only shin guards? Head gear, everything. And oh, head gear, yeah. too. Gloves, you, can't, you can't knock people guard. out. And the, I see. And the ref gets to decide when it gets too crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's not supposed to be any knockouts. If you knock somebody out, you yeah. lose. Yeah. So it's kind of like an exhibition then. Basically. Yeah. Basically. And what's crazy is, right, everybody in that building, including me, open face headgear. Yeah. The guy that I'm fighting, the biggest bar. person in the in the whole building mm -hmm. has a fucking big ass bar headgear. Uh -huh. I'm like, all right. He connected <laughs> so, him with a super oh, hard overhand oh and God. the bar protected him. Bro, uh, if that, that bar wasn't there, I probably yeah. broke his nose. Like, yeah. Yeah. no, no lie. Cause I felt the when I landed, yeah. And when, when I punch in my head, when yeah. I'm punching hard, I'm always punching through. And this is the bowling and ball I arm, too. It is the bowling ball <laughs> arm, bro. Like, imagine, bro. Like, especially on the lanes now, bro. But I remember feeling it in my glove, the bar just, like, pushing me. Like, it felt like my arm went like this. Oh, mm. shit. And uh -huh. I was just like, oh, you're so fucking lucky, yeah. man. But I remember, because, like, in my head, they, like, do this whole meeting. Like, oh, try not, don't knock each other out. La, da. He did not follow that rule. Bro, we're literally facing off. Keep in mind, the judges were at his coaches uh -huh. and then he had his coaches and the ref was one of his coaches oh, no. and we're, we're getting, we get face to face and the guy's yeah. like talking this loud right he's like all right yeah you yeah you guys can go 100 percent um but if one person's 100 percent here and one person's here we're gonna stop it uh, I was just like, oh. <laughs> but in my head, this whole, like, <laughs> almost two weeks, I'm like, oh, we're, it was just going to be like a sparring yeah, match, right? Yeah. And then right when we start, boom, 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 boom oh, right down the man. middle. And I was like, oh, we're fighting. Bro. Yeah, yeah, like, holy shit. Like, but it took me a little bit to, like, register. Like, yeah. oh, fuck. After your head gets knocked about six yeah. times. Like, okay. The this shitty thing about that for PKB matches for somebody that has Alex's fight style is that Alex's fight style is pressure. He gets mm -hmm. hit, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of that stuff is burst movement. And when you don't have corners to corner yep. somebody, yeah. you kind of limit what his abilities are, mm -hmm. right? Because literally, it's it's not that in the sense of in a cage where you can run around a little bit. I'm talking about you step out, they reset. Yeah, they yeah. step out, resetting. Resetting, oh. Bro. oh, they reset. So he yeah. was using that to his advantage where he would step out and reset every time Alex would close the distance. Oh. Yeah. So literally, it always felt like Right when I got close, I'm like, all yeah. right, here's my chance. Yeah. Stop, reset. I'm yeah. like, fuck. <laughs> like, man, come come on. on, let me fight, bro. Yeah. It, it was, it yeah, was so, so annoying. Those yeah. PKB matches do have that one like weird caveat, which okay. I really dislike. Uh -huh. So it kind of mitigates 
honestly what a real fight supposed to be right, like you can't they, just like put your foot outside of a square and yeah. stop the yeah, fight like completely kills the rhythm and flow mm -hmm. of it yeah so when he did connect super hard with the overhand and dude that leg kick fucked him up yeah but yeah he got he didn't get the W or Alex didn't get the W no. but it, it, like I, I got one because like I'd say like mo the whole for, like, first two rounds was like I was like, man, this fool is long as fuck, bro. Six five, dude. And then I kept Damn. trying to like do the inside low kick, and yeah. then it was like towards the end of the second uh -huh. when I started throwing the outside. And I remember going back to the corner, Nick's like, bro, that outside. I was like, yeah, that's there. And Wait. then so the whole third round, that's yeah. when I was I kept doing it. I fucked his leg up. That's what set up the overhand because I kicked his leg. He did like a turn, started coming in. I dipped and I hit him uh -huh. with an overhand. <sighs> that was and, pretty. And I was just like. Yeah, I just waited too Wait, long. Wait, so how tall are you? Five six. Five, five six. six against the it's six a whole five foot taller dude. Fucking I still hey, remember dude. too when I signed Bro. up. I went to the guy. I was like, because you find out your opponent day of. Yeah. I was like, hey, do you have any other heavyweights waiting? And he's like, no, we'll, <laughs> we'll let you know. So I'm like chilling in my car, just yeah. like on my phone. And then I go back in to go to the bathroom. And the guy goes, hey, um, yeah, so we have another heavyweight. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. And he's like. It, it's him over there, and the guy so was like over there. Player, yeah, he was over there in the bag, and I look. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I can't find no we're, just, we're just staring at each other, uh -huh. and I'm like, did I like need to assign something? Yeah. Or he's like, no, nah, I just I just wanted to let you know, dude. I was like, okay, yeah. It's like that yeah, was fucking huge, <laughs> yeah. man. Like, right. Also, dude, it was kind of whack that the ref was actually his coach. That's right, bro, they were all like all for him and shit. I'm yeah. like, after but, every round, I'm like, what's damn, fucked bro? up is after the fight, he gets the W. Mm -hmm. And it's his fucking coaches who let him go that hard, first of all, yeah. right? From well, the beginning. They wanted him to win. And then he's mm -hmm. salty at you. Yeah, bro. I was like, what the <laughs> yeah, fuck? I was like, like motherfucker, you won, yeah. bro. Like, I was like, yo, we can scrap right now. I, yeah. I was like, what the hell? No clubs, let's go. I was like, all right then. And then his coach is like, yeah, you hurt his leg. And he was like limping. He's like, you hurt his leg. Because I remember when I was landing those kicks too, I still remember like throwing them and feeling them land because I was literally aiming just like right above his knee. Just like, boom, trying to make him like chop inwards, right? And a couple of them was like, ooh, that shit was hard, bro. <laughs> like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> See that feeling? Well, yeah. guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I hope this has been a long time since we did a fight podcast, but if you ever wanted to watch a fight to motivate you to even get into MMA, you have to watch 278. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You could catch Alex at Lift God. Was that three Fs? Uh, two Fs, two Gs, baby. So you guys do lift picks as well. If you're yeah. looking for photography needs, he does all that stuff for you. Hit him up, book him, get that, get that shit in there. You yeah. just hit up Ed at Ed to E D T W O. And also check out Secret Society, S C R T S O C I E T Y. That Genius Brain Secret Society uh, collab is dropping. Super, super important. One of my favorite things that I've ever done in my life. And you guys know I rarely, rarely ever drop uh, anything that has to do with, you know, Davis So Comedy or Genius Brain. And this is the right way to do it. Yes, so sir. keep your eye out for that. Pre orders will be in soon, and we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.